video is an inferencing activity using mood boards. So mood boards are a way for people to express their thoughts, their emotions, um, and ideas. And basically you can use items, pictures, colors, any kind of images to put together and create a mood board. So I came up with this idea when I was having conversations with teachers and we were talking about inferencing and I had just read about mood boards. So giving students a chance to express their understanding uh, of a particular topic or the details of a topic, being able to compare and contrast ideas, I think this is a really great way for them to do that. So what I have for you is an example and check out this picture. I created this with some items that remind me of a story that I used to love from my childhood. And if you check out those particular items, all of them have to do with the monster at the end of the book. I love this book. It was my favorite one as a child. I actually have like five copies of this because I don't ever want to lose it. And within it, you have Grover trying to make sure nobody turns the page because he thinks that there's a scary monster at the end of the book. And within here, he uses things like rope and boards nailed to, to the page and building brick wall. And so that's what all those different items uh, that were in the picture represent. And of course, the blue material was to represent Grover himself. Um, and so those are the things that I really, really loved about this book was um, getting to break through all those barriers. And that's why I made that my mood board to infer what this book was. So it would be a really interesting thing to do in any particular subject. Um, and thinking along the lines of maybe in social studies, having them take a topic that they've learned about and uh, they have to choose items that, that really speak to the story of what that topic is. And you can have the students do different ones and put them up and have the students, the other students try and guess what topic was that person trying to describe? How did those items represent the story? Um, what emotions do you get out of that? And those are really great things for students to use um, when they're trying to infer. Uh, one of the other things I thought about doing is you could do a gallery walk. You know, you can have a gallery of these pictures and you can have them compare and contrast uh, different things that maybe you're, you're teaching about. If you would do it in Venn diagram, why not do a compare and contrast of a gallery of different particular um, mood boards? And really, this is just a really great way that you can give students choice in what they're doing, and you can even have them try and pick out the similarity and differences between the same topic but different student mood boards and discuss why are those similarities and differences there. I think there's a really great in-depth conversations that you can use to build better communication skills with students um, and ta on top of the inferencing. And thinking along the lines of different grade levels, I think that when you're doing primary grades, you might want to think more along the lines of using the hands-on actual items, um, whereas your secondary, you might want to do digital, having them find, find pictures and, and have them create pictures that they put together uh, and design that into um, a mood board with colors and whatnot to, uh, to make that particular one their own. So there are different ways you can do that. So if you've tried this activity in your classroom, please be sure to share in the comments how it went, what uh, could we do to make it better, um, and if you did a different take on it, also share those things because I love hearing how other people take ideas and mold them to fit their unique classroom. And thanks again for watching. If you like this video, then make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.